Hi everybody, I would like tonight to make a stream, uh, a general stream on abstract games, where I will maybe briefly explain uh, the rules of uh, some some games, and then I will uh, classify the, all uh, these abstract games in uh, seven uh, sets of games, and. Uh, I will briefly also explain the difference between these categories and I will uh, say if I feel more confident in some of these uh, sets or not. And it's absolutely true that generally some players are, are really good uh, in capture games or in territory games, but uh, this is how you can uh, make some uh, distinction between uh, all these abstract games. So let's start and you will see that already um, trying to know which is the the category of a game is not always uh, really easy. To uh, explain what I mean with this, we're going to start with uh, lines of action. Um, uh, briefly, I will put uh, a lines of action game and I will explain the rules in maybe 30 seconds or something. Uh, well, let's on my profile. And I will take, let's say, uh, well, a game of lines of action, okay. In lines of, a in lines of action, uh, at the start, you have uh, 12 pieces for black and for white. And the goal of each uh, player is to connect all his pieces. And you have also some captures. For instance, uh, uh, you can capture the, the piece of the opponent like this, okay, and uh, in the end, a player will have all his pieces connected. Here, white won the game, because as you can see, all the white pieces are connected. Okay, so if I go back there, we could say that lines of action is a connection game, since the goal of the game is to connect all your pieces. On the other hand, you have also some capture in uh, this game where you, you capture the, the opponent pieces. You would say, okay, it's a capture game. No, no, it's not a capture game because the goal is not to capture something. Capture is there, it's a part of the game, but it's not the goal of the game. It's like, uh, it's like Go. Go is not a capture game. You have some captures in Go, uh, but this is not really the goal of the game. So. Lines of action would not be a capture game. It would be a connection game, but I'm not really satisfied with this. I don't really like to put uh, lines of action in connection game for uh, this reason. Um, as you can see, on this board, uh, Black could try to put all his pieces, let's say, on the bottom of the board, and White could try to put all his pieces on the left of the board. And finally, um, both players are doing something, but they are not blocking each other. I mean, if black is trying to put all his pieces on the bottom and white trying to put all his pieces on the left, they are not blocking each other. And finally, maybe one player will uh, complete uh, the goal just one turn before uh, the opponent would also uh, do the job, okay? So since you are not blocking your opponent by uh, doing your goal, I would say that lines of action is finally a race game. Both player can do uh, the job, but they are not really blocking the opponent. They just try to do something um, faster than the opponent. So I prefer to put lines of action in uh, the race games. Let's take, um, let's say Hex now. Hex is absolutely a pure connection game. If we take, uh, I will go also on my profile and take a Hex game. Uh, well, it's too big. I will take something like this, okay. In Hex, both players pl are playing, okay, and black is just trying to connect the top to the bottom 
and the white is trying to connect the left to the right. Okay. We can see in the end, for instance, in this game, black won, since black connected the bottom to the top, we can see that uh, white was not able to win at the next turn on something. It's really, if black is winning, white, white cannot win anymore. It's like, okay, white can play, uh, can still play in the game and black stop uh, playing. Uh, white will never achieve uh, his goal because it's not possible anymore. So X is not at all a race game. There is no, not a question of uh, uh, doing something faster than your opponent. It's not really this. It's when your opponent uh, achieve the goal, you won't be able to, to do it anymore, even if you have uh, infinite time. This is why Hex is really a connection game. Well, we can also put Twix in connection game directly since uh, Twix and X are basically uh, really, really close. Uh, uh, I will put a Twix game to be uh, complete, but uh, okay, uh, it's uh, it's the same. I already made some uh, stream on Twix, but uh, players are playing, okay, and uh, it's the same. Uh, you put some stone and some bridges, and the, the goal of black is to connect the left to the right and the far right, the bottom to the top. Uh, and it's absolutely the same as in X. If one player is winning, the other is just blocked and uh, he cannot achieve the goal uh, anymore. Okay, so it's definitely a, a connection game. Uh, what we could take? We could take uh, we could take Gomoku and Connect 6. They are really easy to put in some uh, category. Gomoku and Connect 6 are definitely in a row uh, game. I can just pick. Gomoku is five in a row and Connect Six is six in a row. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's pick a game. Okay. Well, this is uh, just concerning the start. It's something special with the swap rule. But in this game, okay, each turn black and white are playing and the goal is to uh, make a five in a row. So, well, uh, it's it's pretty really easy to to categorize this. Well, it's pretty clear. It's uh, just in a row game. But for some other uh, in a row games, it would be uh, maybe not that easy. You will see. I I took Gomoku and Connect Six because of because for these two ones, it's uh, clearly some. Uh, some inner games okay so here in connect six you need to make a six in a row and the first player you put is putting a stone in the middle and then the player play the stones two by two okay so it's pretty funny because you can use the two stones to attack you can use one stone to defend and the other one to attack you can use the two stones to defend the game is pretty interesting it's something a little different and, and i really like this one i would say this is my preferred uh, inner row games. Okay. Uh, in this position, White uh, won the game with uh, six in a row there. Okay. I will take the four in a row because four in a row is interesting. Four in a row, you could put the four in a row uh, in inner row games. It would be absolutely logical. But uh, I would not put it there. I think there is uh, another category which is uh, which is more uh, which is more obvious to me. Uh, I will exp I will explain this. Uh, of course, uh, if we take uh, uh, yes uh, yes, Mr. Cole, <laughs> I'm playing in a row games. Uh, I like Gomoku and Connect Six. I don't really like uh, four in a row, and I will explain uh, directly why. Let's pick. Uh, let's pick four in a row. Since I, I I I don't play it, so I will just play a game. Play. I will just pick a game on another player who is playing it. Okay, for instance, this one. Okay, so in uh, four in a row, we are playing in the columns. 
so you cannot play uh, there. For instance, it's not possible to say I will play uh, here, okay? Because uh, you just put in the column and it go it goes down. So you can play only on the bottom. And of course, the goal is to make a four in a row. Um, so it's an in a row game, but there is something a little uh, subtil that you won't see directly when you play. Uh, this game is finally that we can call a parity game. I will explain. Uh, when you play this game, you will see, f for instance, it's absolutely uh, obvious there. You can see that in column three, uh, nobody want to play. Okay. If you play there, uh, if red play there, what? Uh, yellow gonna win with a four in a row so red uh, don't want to play here but uh, also there and there red could win in this column what i mean is in the end where when all the board is uh, complete uh, a player will have to play in a column where he doesn't want to play and this is basically what we call a uh, A parity game it's a question of parity and at the moment uh, a player will be forced to play in a column uh, where he doesn't want to play actually uh, finally red after completing all the board red had to play in the uh, column seven and this is directly losing uh, it, it's a question of parity if uh, it was yellow to play actually, yellow play there and red would be happy because he could block the four in a row of uh, yellow. So to me, I would put four in a row more in parity game actually. Okay, um, there are some, I put also some games that are not on Little Golem, for instance, uh, Backgammon. Well, I won't uh, describe Backgammon since it's pretty standard game. But since it's a game with dices, it goes directly in probability game. When you have some dices in a game, it's uh, directly a probability game. It's uh, obvious. And we can put also there the famous <laughs> Einstein Würfelt nicht, that I really like, I would say. It's a pretty funny game. I can explain briefly the rules. Maybe someone would want to try this. It's pretty funny. Um, let's pick... Uh, Let's pick this one. Okay. Okay. In Einstein Würfelt nicht. Uh, first, uh, it starts on zero zero, and uh, the winner is the first who get uh, three points. Uh, blue player got his six pieces on bottom left, on bottom right, sorry, and uh, on top left for the six red pieces. Uh, the order is uh, something random. Okay. You have one there. You have one there. It's something random. And uh, you have a dice there. It means that I made a four, I need to move my four. And I can go only in the opposite. So if I'm there, I can play on the top, diagonally, or on the left. I, I can play only on these uh, three positions. And I can't, I can't take my own pieces. There I decided to not, but I could take my own pieces. For instance, there, as you can see, with the two. I had to move my two and I decided to take my three, okay, which is absolutely possible. And the goal of blue is to put in the opposite corner one of his piece and the goal of red is to put in the opposite corner one of his piece. Okay, if you do this, you will have one point. Of course, uh, if you are making a number when you don't have any more the this number, for instance, uh, well, at this moment, I have, I have. Mm. Okay. Okay, for instance, at this moment, I'm making a three. Since I, I don't have my three, I need to play the uh, next one above my three or the next one uh, just uh, below my three. Here, it means that I have the choice between my two and my six. And I, of course, I decided to move my two to take uh, the first point okay and when you reach three points you win the game so of course it's a probability game 
well chess and all uh, its variants like uh, like Chinese chess, Japanese chess. Uh, well, I guess it's pretty obvious. Uh, chess are capture game. Uh, the goal of chess is to capture the opponent king, so it's uh, pretty standard to put in a capture game. We have uh, breakthrough. Breakthrough is uh, well. You, maybe you will tell me what is breakthrough. Breakthrough. Well, I will first explain the rule. Let's say. Uh, Let's say that breakthrough Okay, in breakthrough you are starting like this and uh, you can move a piece uh, diagonally or orthogonally you just have uh, three positions and you need to go uh, well, I, as white I need to go ab above, okay? I cannot uh, go back in this game so we are just playing something like this and the goal is to put one of your pieces on the uh, last uh, row uh, where your opponent uh, started. Okay, uh, maybe, and you have some capture. You just can, well, a standard move can be a capture if it's diagonally. You can diagonally capture uh, an, an opponent piece, not your own pieces. Okay, for instance, there we had a capture. Okay, so if you put on the last row one of your pieces, you win. So white is trying to go on the eighth row and the black on the first one. Maybe someone can tell me on the stream what uh, category for breakthrough. It's not connection, you are not making some territories, it's not in a row, you are not trying to capture something. <laughs> well, yeah, it's a race game. The first who is doing something and you are not blocking your opponent. Like in Lights of Action, you are not really blocking your opponent, but if you achieve the goal first, uh, you're gonna win the game. Okay, I have here also uh, a game uh, well, I have to say that I'm absolutely not an expert uh, alone, but uh, one of my friend, uh, Hi Vincent uh, Frochot, who is French also, and uh, he is a multiple times world champion of Abelone, and he is really, really good. Um, he tried to <laughs> teach me a little, but <laughs> I'm not really great at Abelone. Um, in Abelone, you have some, uh, well, I, I could try to because it's not on Little Golem, but I maybe can show. Yes, this is a balloon. For instance, uh, well, okay, this is the the pieces. Well, we we have also some uh, different uh, start for for the pieces, but the you need to move uh, your pieces and to uh, push uh, outside of the board, out, outside of the board, uh, six of the pieces of the opponent. When you do this, you win the game. Uh, so basically, since you need to capture six pieces of your opponent, uh, it seems pretty standard to put Abalone in capture uh, in capture game. Amazons, what is Amazon? I'm playing this one, and I have to say that I really. Well, Abelon is is a really nice game, but it's absolutely not a connection game. It's really a, it's really a capture game, uh, maybe a race game, but well, we're gonna put it in capture game since uh, when you capture six of your opponent's stones, you win the game. If you like capture games, uh, you should try to have a look on this one. We were on Amazon. I will take. Let's say this game. Okay. In Amazon. Oh, huh, this is not the standard one. Okay. I will pick another game because this is a little. It's a variant. It's a cross variant. Okay. Let's pick uh, this one. It's better to explain. Okay. 
so you have like in uh, chess uh, you have four uh, queens and your queens are moving like queen in chess okay and after moving your amazon will uh, also put something uh, where she could go like uh, well i played uh, this move okay and I have to put somewhere there, somewhere there, somewhere there, somewhere, something, and you cannot uh, go uh, behind, of course, uh, some pieces. Uh, I can make a fire with my Amazon here. And this is how you block, uh, basically, your opponent, but also yourself. Nobody can go uh, through uh, this block, okay? And uh, if we can see the end, it will be obvious what is the Amazon's. Okay, at this moment, uh, you can see that this area can be played only by black, this area only by black, this area, area only by white, okay? And the goal of Amazon is to be the last who can play something. If at a moment you don't have legal move, you just lose the game, okay? And so uh, Amazon is easily a territory game since you are making some territory where you are the only one who can uh, make uh, some move and if you have a bigger territory than your opponent then uh, you're gonna win the game uh, for instance uh, if we go until the end almost uh, okay there uh, black resigned because black has only two uh, moves when uh, white can play four moves so uh, white will ha still have two legal moves when black uh, cannot play anymore um, and so white is uh, winning uh, this uh, this game this is why amazon is a territory game the, of course this is not the most known in the world territory game the most known in the world territory game is of course the go i won't explain uh, the go rule since uh, first it's pretty standard so i think that it's not hard to find the go rules on the internet and moreover it's a little complicated so uh, it's hard to ex I, I think it's really hard to explain go uh, fast uh, it's like to really understand uh, go you should almost read uh, a book for beginners or something it's really hard i i mean to it's not like some other games where you can directly play and have fun go is really really uh, something uh, where you need to study a little to to understand what is going on there Okay, what we have, uh, oh, draw checkers, uh, it's pretty standard. I think everybody knows uh, draw and checkers, so I won't explain the rules also, but uh, I can just put maybe uh, a game of draw checkers that uh, White is going on top, black is going on bottom. You can never go back. Well, you can go back when you capture something. To capture, you need to jump. Okay, so here, black took and white will uh, take back here. Okay, white is taking back. Um, and the goal is to, to capture all the pieces of your opponent. And if a piece... Uh, can go on the last row of uh, the the opponent okay for instance if this piece goes there uh, then uh, she will receive uh, some special moves and she will she can go back okay when you are on the last of course it would be useless uh, since you cannot play anymore but no you have a bonus and this piece can go back to to capture uh, uh, and it's basically called uh, draws or checkers uh, when she is reaching the, the last row and so well it's not really hard to say that uh, draws checkers are capture games since uh, the goal of uh, draws checker is to capture all the opponent pieces what we have oh, we have some interesting one well we can start with slitter which is uh, really easy to to classify uh, i really like this one to be honest <laughs> because uh, it's it's standard and not standard uh, yes, it's true. I I, I, I did not put the uh, GIF games because uh, personally, 
I'm not really an expert of this one. And I think maybe at least uh, at the moment, they are not really known in the world. I mean, uh, they are starting to be known, but well, I, I wanted to put uh, maybe uh, the most known uh, games. I didn't, uh, as you can see there, I, 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 I played some catch up games. I didn't, I didn't uh, pick uh, catch up in this list. I could, but well, I wanted to focus maybe on a few games that are maybe the most uh, known in the world. Maybe I'm wrong with the list I choose, but well, I, I decided to do this like that. Um, uh, let's pick, uh, we were talking about Slither. Slither is a game that I, I have to say I really like because it's, uh, it's really funny because uh, it's uh, really, really different of uh, other uh, connection game. Of course, it's a connection game since uh, I, would I will say directly the goal of, uh, we are playing moves, okay, uh, like in other uh, connection games. And the goal of black is to connect the top to the bottom and the goal of white to connect the left uh, to the right. Uh, so, of course, we can directly do it. It's a connection game. And when you are connecting uh, something, you are blocking your opponent. So uh, it's uh, it's really uh, I, I don't know any, I don't know uh, Faust, but um, I can check this. I, I I don't know this game to be honest, but I I, I will do I, I I will do this. I will check uh, what is this. Um, in Slither, what is really particular is that uh, it's a dynamic game. Okay. Uh, hex, twixt, uh, well, twixt, well, well, twixt, well, hex, start with hex. Hex is not dynamic at all, okay? You are just putting some stone on the board, and uh, at uh, turn eight, there are exactly eight stone on the board, okay? And they did not move at all. They were placed at uh, uh, somewhere, and they won't move uh, during all the game. Uh, X is not what we can call a dynamic game. Uh, it's like uh, it's a stone. It's it doesn't uh, move at all. In uh, Slither, uh, each turn, uh, players uh, put a new stone on the board, and they are allowed to to move one of their stone only on of uh, one uh, square. It means that this stone can go there 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 on the on the eight okay uh, let's pick for instance okay in the next move we, we will see that okay white was there and white move this piece there and play there okay so it means that in slither uh, it's a connection game but it's really different than uh, for instance tweaks or hex because of this the fact that one piece is moving is really something uh, important. Uh, also, you can see that it's plain on uh, on squared, uh, and uh, there is something uh, in a Slither that you need to know if you want to try it. It's that it's not possible to have, for instance, uh, okay, it's not possible to have two pieces diagonally like this without a piece there or there. It means that if you have a white piece here and the white piece here to be legal you need to have a white piece there or a white piece there it's uh, never possible to have uh, it's never possible to have uh, two pieces diagonally like this without another piece of the same color uh, there or there uh, and this is uh, basically how you block your opponent because uh, since you need to connect the left to the right if you could do this, as you can see, if you put uh, black there and if this one was black also, well, it means that uh, both players can cross each other and nobody is blocking, uh, uh, well, nobody is blocked and uh, f the game doesn't make any sense. Uh, so this is an absolutely forced rule uh, to have uh, to make sense. Um, you should really try this game if you never try it. Uh, it's really something. Uh, it's really something different. I I would say that it's it's really really nice. Okay, we can talk about uh, well, still four games. We can talk about uh, we can talk about 
let's say Havana. Uh, Havana is not standard since you have uh, multiple ways to win uh, the game. It's uh, a little special. Okay, the board is not always the same size. Here it's uh, 10 by 10 by 10 by 10. Okay. And the goal, you have three possible goals. Uh, or you can connect uh, three uh, edges. Okay. If black, for instance, connect this edge to this edge to this edge, it means three edges. Uh, if the three edges are connected, you win the game. Okay. You can also connect two corners. If you connect two corners, you win the game. It means that the corners are not in the edges. Corners are corners and not edges. It means that, uh, well, or you connect a corner to a corner and it's directly a win, or you connect three uh, three edges of uh, the, the six possible edges, but corners are not counted uh, as part of uh, edges. Okay? And uh, you have a last possible way to, to win, is to make uh, a circle. If you can make a circle, uh, this, well, the smallest possible circle will be uh, with uh, with six, uh, well, like this, black, 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 you make a circle, but also black, 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 black. If you can make a circle, it can be big, it can be small. Uh, this is also a winning condition. Okay, so you have three uh, winning conditions. And uh, I think you will see me uh, uh, come there. Mm, I don't know. I don't really know about the start of uh, Havana. Uh, it's really, really uh, big. It's uh, like uh, it's 10 by 10 by 10. So uh, I don't know, but uh, I'm okay with this. I think it would be better to swap actually. <laughs> hey, pulp. Um, well, if you understood uh, this stream, I think you can uh, classify uh, this game. Uh, as you can see, for instance, black could try to connect these two corners. And during this time, uh, white could try to make uh, a small circle there to win or trying to connect maybe this uh, side to this side to this side. Okay. And uh, they are basically doing something uh, different on maybe not the same place on the board and the winner will be the one who is doing it first so it means that a vena should be a race game we still have reversi dots and boxes and blocus oh i will end uh, with blocus since it's uh, one of my favorite games <laughs> let's talk about reversi and dots and boxes um, I think I played some reversi and dots and boxes uh, games. Um, yeah, well, reversi. I think it, it's a really well-known game. No, it's something that everybody knows. I guess no. Maybe it's not uh, important to present the rules of uh, of this one. Um, in reversi. Uh, the goal is to obtain on the board more peace than your opponent. Okay. And uh, when you jump over uh, a piece, uh, the piece is converted. It means that, for instance, this piece is black. If white play there, this piece is going to be white. And also this one, because here and here you have two whites, so the, the piece in the middle will be, uh, will be white also. And you can convert uh, many pieces at the same time. Okay, for instance, there, as you can see, you have two white and playing there, all these pieces are going to be black. If we go uh, far in the game, uh, you will see something happen. Controlling the corners are really uh, important. For instance, if, if A1 is black, as you can see, then uh, you can play in H1 and you convert all the line and so everything will be uh, black. Uh, well, oh, I think there is something I didn't I didn't say. Uh, you are forced to convert something to play. Uh, you cannot play a move like uh, in A, 
eight, it's not a legal move. To play something, you need to make a conversion of uh, your opponent pieces. So this is why uh, players are always playing around the same place and are uh, taking uh, a piece of the opponent. It's forced. You cannot play, uh, let's say, uh, h8. It's not a legal move. And in the end, of course, uh, it's not really it's not really important the number of pieces at uh, this moment. Uh, you will see. At this moment, we could say that uh, white is winning because white has more pieces, but no, it's not. Uh, it's not true. Black took a corner. Black took another corner, and uh, now it's insane. Okay, as you can see. Uh, Basically, you are trying to play everywhere, but uh, not allowing your opponent to go uh, in the corner. And at the moment, a player is forced to play something to allow, because uh, he has no other legal move. So he's forced to play something that he do doesn't want to play. And finally, the opponent is controlling the board and winning the game. This is why reverse C is definitely a parity game. It's a question of parity. You are trying to be... Uh, uh, the guy who won't play at some at some point, which will allow your opponent to take the good uh, places like corners. Dots and boxes. Uh, this game is uh, it's it's pretty funny because if you don't know uh, something uh, mathematic on the game, you won't understand anything. <laughs> uh, but if you know the mathematics behind uh, this game. It will be completely different. So maybe I will maybe I will explain a little uh, something on this game because uh, it's interesting only if you know it. Mm, okay, no. Uh, let's take a game where it goes until the end. Okay. Uh, in dots and boxes, we are playing on five five. You are just putting some uh, edges, but this is not your uh, edge. Both players are sharing the board. Okay. And when a player will finish a square, it will make one point. You will see. Okay, so players are putting edges like this. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, and there is a moment where someone need to play, let's say here. Okay, and at this point. A player can uh, just uh, end some uh, keep playing there and there. Uh, the the player will uh, take points. Their red is taking points, and this is uh, the moment that you need to realize that actually red could play there, uh, there, and then there, and then there, and took all these four points. But um, since every time you take a point, it's still you to play, so you need to play. When you mark a point, you still play, you still play, you still play. So it's a question of parity. Uh, there is some times where you don't want to play, because if you play, you will give many points to the opponent. Here, uh, red uh, want to stop, okay? And playing this to let blue take uh, these points, to make that blue will play uh, in the other chain. And now, um, Again, red is taking all these points and then playing there to let just one point to blue. And again, blue is forced uh, to play there. And again, I think uh, red will take all the points and let the last two to uh, the opponent. Okay, like this, just completing the squares and then playing there. It's blue to play. Blue will take this one and play there. And the last six points will be for red, and so red is win winning uh, easily uh, this game. What you need to know in this game <laughs> is that uh, there is a principle uh, of long chains. As you can see there, a long chain is a chain of at least uh, three squares. Okay, this is called a long chain. A long chain allows you to make uh, this, okay? When 
to make this. You take one point, so it's at least three squares. So you take one and you give the two last to your opponent to force him to play again. Okay. And the thing is, uh, the the goal of player one and the goal of player two will be related at the start to the number of long chains. It's something like I don't remember because I didn't play uh, during a long time to this game, but it's like uh, if you are player one, you need to make uh, that the parity of the number of long chain is, uh, let's say, even. If there are an even number of long chains, then it means that player two will have to play first in a long chain. And so you will hit, you will uh, uh, mark many, many points and just uh, gi give him a, uh, just give him a few points. Yes, it's it's absolutely a priority game. Uh, dots and boxes. Uh, the the goal of one player is to make a, an even number of long chains, and the goal of the other player is to make an odd number of long chains. Because mathematically, uh, if the number of long chains is uh, even, it means that the player. Uh, well, I don't remember it's if, if it's player one or player two, but let's say player two will have to play first in a long chain. And if uh, the number of long chain is odd, then the first player will have to play first in a long chain. And when you play first in a long chain, it means that you will uh, obtain two points per long chains. Uh, and uh, your opponent will, will uh, take uh, everything else. Uh, as you can see here, uh, blue is playing here, so he will have two points. Then blue is playing here, so he will have, well, here he could play something else, but uh, he will have one point. Uh, then he's playing here, he will have two points. Then he will play here and he'll have nothing since it's the end of the game. Um, this is why uh, Dots and Boxes is absolutely a priority game and it's even a mathematical priority game. If you don't know anything about uh, this uh, uh, number of long, ch long chains, uh, the game is pretty boring because uh, it doesn't make sense. You are not trying to do anything. You are just putting some uh, edges on the board and you are and you don't understand what is going on. Um, there are some there are some books uh, on dots and boxes that explain uh, many many things because uh, it's a little more complicated that I just explained. But the basis is the parity of the number of long chains. This is the really the the thing that you need to know to at least uh, enjoy the game. Uh, this is really the basis. And finally, we uh, end with uh, Blocus uh, called uh, Poliomino on uh, Little Golem, which is a territory game. Uh, I will just present Blocus because it's a game is with uh, <laughs> so nice. Uh, let's take this one. Okay, at the start, I, I made already some videos on uh, on, uh, on Blocus, so I won't uh, be long. But uh, at the start, we have the swap rule where you have uh, a blue player with a piece there, a red orange player with a piece there, and then um, both player can play only on corners. It's never possible to have two pieces of the same color with an edge in. Uh, edge on an edge. It's only corners on corners. Of course, you can go on the edge of uh, the, the opponent. OK, and you are trying to make some uh, you are trying to make some uh, some territory where uh, your opponent cannot go. For instance, uh, I don't know, uh, their orange is taking some corners and so uh, blue cannot play there. Uh, if we go, uh, OK, orange is trying to secure uh, there are some territory where he, in the end, he can play and uh, the the blue cannot play. Okay, and the, in the end, when uh, everybody uh, played what they could, we are just counting uh, the squares that we have uh, that we didn't play finally. Okay, and the the player who has more uh, squares uh, lost the game. So here, for instance, uh, uh, blue used the sixty one 
of uh, his uh, squares and uh, 72 already for orange and orange is still capable to play something and of course at the start uh, both players have uh, the same uh, set of pieces and so of course uh, it's definitely uh, a territory game I will end uh, this uh, video uh, explaining uh, now uh, something on these categories and maybe also explaining where I, I feel the most uh, confident and maybe why uh, I, I can try to explain. Okay, so first I think uh, that the games that are not dynamic, it means without mo moving piece and without captures where you just put something and it stays forever and it doesn't move from the board uh, are games that are really particular and this is personally the games where I feel the more um, confident. I, I don't really know why but it's like if it's uh, it's easier for me to have uh, a general view, a general comprehension of uh, what is going on there since it's uh, fixed when something is moving, when some pieces are, are captured and removed from the board, uh, everything is different. It's, it's not like uh, you can open your eyes, see the whole board and say, okay, uh, where is it beautiful to play? <laughs> where is it nice? And it will be a good move. Where it, it's like you can, I feel that you can see it um, for the, the games that I just talked before where everything is fixed. You can see when a move is small, when a move is big, when a move is uh, nice and the m when a move is uh, maybe useless. Uh, I think it's really easy to, to say uh, when you have some captures and something like this, it's really different. And uh, personally, uh, my two uh, favorite um, categories of games are connection and territory. Uh, I think I'm pretty good at these uh, three games. And this is three games that I really like, X, Twix, Leader, Amazons, Blocus, uh, Go and Blocus. It's really games where I feel the, the more confident. Uh, and I would say that capture games are not the one at all where I feel uh, confident. I, I don't, it's like uh, I'm trying to compute something, but I don't have the general comprehension of uh, uh, these games and it, it, it's like it seems that both players could win the game. Uh, it, uh, it's not the game that talked to me the, the most. Um, now we have parity game also which are easy to classify since and I, to be honest I don't like these games. I really don't like them. To me, it's not interesting. By the way, the computers are amazing to these games. Uh, when it's a question of parity, the computers are just... Uh, if it doesn't make sense to play against computers, they just they will win so easily. Uh, it, it's not that, like for me, it's not like if parity games were for computers and not for humans. It, I'm... well... It's not, uh, it's not something uh, that I really like. We have probability game. To me, it's something more funny. It's not like uh, it was uh, some... It, it's uh, it's great game. Uh, Backgammon, Einstein, Vofotinch are great games, of course. But, well, it's not really serious. To be honest, uh, you can have, uh, I don't know, 2000 LO and you will lose to someone who, who has... Uh, 1000 it's absolutely possible in these games if you are not lucky you can lose uh, against everybody and if you are really lucky you can win against everybody it's particularly true in <laughs> Einstein for um, so I would say that parity game are the game that I like uh, I, I don't like probability games are funny capture games are nice but I don't feel con confident in it it's not it fits like it wasn't really for me I am really confident in connection game and, and territory games. It's it's like um, I can see, like I I can understand these games uh, really easily. And now we have in a row and race. 
I really like in Euro games, to be honest. Uh, these uh, two games, uh, Gomoku and Connexis, are really nice, but um, it's like if there is something in the opening. Um, sometimes these games are played uh, in the opening, it's, uh, and sometimes not. Sometimes uh, there is a game, and sometimes uh, there is just a sequence which is not obvious, and you are you just lost in three moves, and it's uh, it's a little boring. But I think with experience, uh, maybe uh, they are really, 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 really great. I, I think these two games are really, really nice. And we have race. Race's games are. F I don't know. I don't know what to think about race's games. I'm. I don't really like them, but uh, I still like them more than priority games. So I think uh, I made this classification because uh, my preferred game are connection games, then territory games, then in a row, then capture, then race, then priority, and probability are something uh, which we can put uh, everywhere since uh, it's something different. It's not really the the, the classment, but. Uh, well, this is uh, my classment. Connection in first, territory in two, in a row, capture, race, priority, and um, well, well, probability for fun. Well, uh, that's all I want to say about uh, this. Uh, maybe it was uh, interesting for you. Uh, if you have, uh, if you have questions, uh, you can ask on the stream. If you have not, I think I will uh, just uh, close this stream. What, you are, what are you saying, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Cole, my friend from Finland? Uh, we played uh, so many games together. Thank you for the overview of many different games. The explanation were very easy to understand. This encouraged me to learn some more games on LG. <laughs> That's a good point. And I will uh, see what is uh, forced that to talk to me. Uh, since uh, it's close to Slither, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm interested in because <laughs> I really like uh, Slither. Not uh, like uh, to to be honest, if I need to put two games that I really like the most is Twixt and Blocus. This is the two games that I love the the most. And then uh, probably Slither, Hex, and Go. Also, Gomoku and Connect Six. I, I don't, uh, to be honest, I don't really like Amazons. Uh, it's a territory game, but uh, well, I like it, but not so much. Faust is very unique. It has an area capture rule I haven't seen elsewhere. Oh, so there are captures. Uh, there are captures, so maybe uh, it won't uh, talk to me a lot since uh, uh, Curry Clark. Yes, this is the. The one who invented the uh, slitter. By the way, he I know that uh, he changed uh, his rule. Uh, he changed the he changed the rule of uh, of slitter, but uh, we never changed uh, the rule on uh, little golem. He add uh, he added uh, a rule to his game. I don't know if you if you know that. Um, I think the rule that he had it is the fact that a piece can move still from uh, one square, but only if the if the piece is uh, already uh, touching a piece of uh, the same color. It means that, for instance, uh, now you you cannot move, uh, but now if you have this position. Uh, these three three stones are allowed to move uh, at the next uh, at the next turn, but uh, this piece is not allowed to move. Or I don't know if it's something like this or if it's well, yes, I think it's something like this. You you can move only if you are touching uh, one of your pieces. I I I'm pretty sure that uh, Corre uh, added this to the game, but uh, well, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, M. Cole, and uh, I will uh, I will check this. Um, bye bye for uh, see you for uh, oh I haven't heard <laughs> of that before sounds like an interesting difference yes yes it's a big 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 difference uh, if it was uh, implemented I think uh, it would be uh, an absolutely different game um, I don't know about this I don't have any opinion I think uh, maybe both games are nice but uh, 
are just different. Uh, thank you to Memcall and see you soon uh, on uh, see you soon on Little Glen. Bye bye.